Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We are referencing my grandma's 25 horsepower Mercury outboard. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the common causes that lead to a misfire at high RPM. Really, one of three things either a foul plug, a faulty coil, or a malfunction switch box. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers. Hey, we are on the computer. And before we head to the actual boat and discuss all of the parts or the common causes, I wanted to show you our exact serial number outboard ignition diagram. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, really the three common causes is your spark plug, your spark plug boots or wires, or one of or both ignition coils, or even worse, however unlikely and uncommon, is your switch box. And again, this is our ignition system diagram, and we are going to start all the way up at number 7, 10, 11, 12, 13. And we'll start with number 7. This is an ignition coil. In our case, that's what ours looks like. And then number 10 is just a nut. And number 11, as you can see, our spark plug wires. Number 12, the spark plug wire boot. And number 13, our spark plugs. So again, spark plug, spark plug wire and boot, and ignition coil. Now feeding all the way down to number 14, that is our ignition system switch box. As you see right here, it's basically a small little box. We will see it in person when we go to the boat. And it has several electrical wires and several electrical connection points feeding off of it. And connecting to these electrical connection points are additional electrical wiring connection points that feed power throughout the entire outboard to their respective parts, including ignition coil, voltage regulator, stator, starter relay, starter, and more. So again, DIYers, before we head to the boat, I just wanted to show you the diagram so you can actually see what they look like before going to the boat and seeing them up close and more realistic as opposed to a diagram photo. But again, I wanted you to see both. From here, let's head to my grandma's and check out the boat. All right, DIYers, here we are at the lake, and it is early. I don't see anyone on the lake this morning, but it's only a matter of time. And again, the common causes of why you are having a misfire at high RPM. Let's go to the back of the boat. Make our way to the back of the boat and we have again a 25 horsepower mercury outboard at this point we are inside the boat to the captain's seat what i want to do first is direct our attention to the right side of the steering wheel where we have our ignition and as you can see we have off run start and push to choke and this is where we put our key in nothing fancy no different than yours probably however when we insert that key and shift it clockwise through the run and start position to start the engine the electrical signal inside that ignition switch that feeds inside our dash behind this actual panel here is where the electrical wiring takes over and feeds that electrical current through the wires all the way back to the outboard engine and to the switch box i wanted to show you that first what we'll do now is head back outside the boat and take a look inside the outboard. All right, DIYers, I've got the boat positioned in a way where I can gain much better access to the outboard engine. And down here, in our case, we have this little latch. We're going to push it down and we can carefully pull right here up and remove the cover. And at first glance, you can see our spark plugs, both the upper and lower cylinders, and our spark plug wires and boots feeding into the ignition coils. And let's go port side because I want to show you our exact switch box. And making our way port side and just underneath the flywheel, you see all of those electrical connections and they secure into their respective fittings. Well, DIYers, that is our exact switch box as you see right there. And directly below that is the rectifier or regulator. Helps charge the battery when the engine is running. And to the left of that, we have our starter solenoid and our starter and our carburetor inside there. However, directing our attention back to the switch box right there. And that also feeds wiring to many electrical ignition parts. There are the ignition coils. In addition, the wire that feeds all the way from the ignition inside when you're sitting in the boat and putting the key in the ignition and starting it, comes all the way back here. Switch box manages it and sends it out to the starter solenoid and starter to start the engine. So I wanted to show you that. Taking a step back, and again, that is one of the common causes, but I will be honest, that is the least likely out of the three I am going to talk about. The most likely is your actual spark plugs. All right, DIYers, a quick reposition of the camera. And again, we're looking at the back portion of the outboard where the cylinders are, the spark plugs, the boots, the wires, and the ignition coils. And the most likely common cause on an outboard misfiring at a high RPM is the actual spark plugs. So when you remove your cap, direct your attention to the plugs themselves or the inserts of the cylinders and check to see if anything's out of the ordinary or damaged. 
In addition, I recommend taking off the spark plug boots and taking a look at the actual plugs and maybe grab a ratchet and socket and remove each plug out of the cylinder inserts and check to see the opposite end where the electrode of the actual plug itself looks like. In other words, if you pull this boot off and remove the actual plugs with a ratchet and socket, the internal or opposite end of the plug should be clean and dry. In other words, it should not be soaked in oil and wet, nor should it be coated with black soot, again, on the electrode itself. And in the event that it is either, again, soaked in oil or wet, or extremely burnt and black, DIYers, it's time to replace your spark plugs. However, in the event that you replaced your plugs recently, you also replaced your spark plug wires and boots. Well, the next common cause could be the actual plug gap. And that is extremely, extremely important. In the event that you just installed brand new plugs, but you did not gap the plugs, believe it or not, your outboard engine will run even worse than it did when having the old plugs installed, whether they were wet with oil or burnt. So again, the actual gap on the electrode of your spark plug is extremely important. So again, if you've got brand new plugs, but you forgot to gap them, that could be your cause of why you are misfiring at a high RPM. And DIYers, we're not going to cover the gapping procedure in this video. However, down below in the comment section and description section will be a link on how to properly and safely gap a spark plug. So definitely check that out. So again, common cause number one, bad plugs. Common cause number two, brand new plugs, however, not properly gapped. And that leads us to common cause number three. Let's feed all the way up top to our ignition coils. In our case, we've got two of them because we have a two-cylinder, two-cycle outboard engine. And DIYers, in the event that you have never replaced your ignition coils, or it's been about five, six, seven years since you've replaced your coils, it might be time to replace those coils. Because just like the plugs and spark plug boots and wires, the ignition coils play a significant role in the ignition system and the spark of your engine or plug and electrode inside your cylinders. And if you've got a bad coil or two faulty coils, well, your ignition and spark or ignition system and spark will be greatly degraded and that's not what you want. And in our case, we actually had a cracked ignition coil. So what we did was get up to speed, full throttle, and every now and then it would experience an aggressive misfire. And that bugged us because we had brand new plugs, we had the plugs properly gapped, we had brand new plug wires and boots, and we tested our switch box, and everything was good. However, we were still getting that misfire. So that directed us to the top portion of the engine where our two ignition coils are, and we replaced those. And during that replacement process, again, we realized that one of our ignition coils was completely cracked in half, the little magnet inside. And I'll show you that on the workbench at home. So again, in the event that you have not replaced your ignition coils, it's time to replace them. You might have a faulty and worn out ignition coil. And while we're talking about the ignition coils, let's go back to the switch box. And what the switch box does, once you turn that key while you're sitting in the captain's seat in the boat with plans of turning on the engine, that electrical signal will travel through all the wiring, make its way back to the switch box, and the switch box will then send that electrical signal to your ignition coils. And what do the ignition coils do? Well, they take that ignition and sparking power and multiply it or enhance it significantly to a point where the current travels through the spark plug wires into the boots, into the plugs, into the cylinders, and to the electrode, and a far more enhanced spark than without ignition coils. In other words, you wouldn't really be able to start your engine if you had faulty ignition coils. Or your engine might turn over, it might start, but you are going to experience some aggressive shaking with the engine when it's running. And that's not normal, right? So again, common cause number three, faulty or worn out or cracked, in our case, ignition coils. So we will also have a link down below in the comment section and description section on how to properly and safely replace your ignition coils. Believe it or not, it's a pretty friendly project. And from here, I want to position the boat again in a way where we can see the actual switch box. All right, DIYers, a quick reposition of the camera. Again, we're looking at port side of the inner portion of our outboard engine and directly below the flywheel is our switch box. And again, when you're sitting in the captain's seat, you turn the key, it sends that electrical signal to our switch box where the switch box basically manages and controls all of the inbound and outbound electrical current to their respective parts, which include the regulator, the starter solenoid, the starter, and the ignition coils up top and a few additional parts. And again, I'm coming back to the switch box last because it is the least likely part to fail within your ignition system. Or in other words, the least likely part to cause a misfire at high RPMs when the engine is running. However, again, plays a significant and important role within your ignition system and 
the spark being generated and multiplied and enhanced by each of your ignition coils so that the proper amount of power is sent through the wires, through the boots, into the plugs, to the electrode to turn that engine over and get it to start. However, the switch box can only do its part and it will rely on the other parts to pick up their job when that time comes. In other words, once you turn that key inside the captain's seat and send that signal to the switch box and the switch box then sends the signal to the starter solenoid, starter and ignition coils and everything is working properly. However, you've got one faulty ignition coil. Well, the switch box can't do anything about that. Again, the switch box did its job by sending that electrical current to the ignition coil where it then expects the ignition coil to do its job and enhance the ignition to actually fire the spark plug and fire the engine to a point where it properly and efficiently starts and once it does start it properly and efficiently runs as designed so again a quick recap common cause number one you've got bad plugs common cause number two you've got good plugs but you forgot to gap them or where you bought them from mentioned that they were pre-gapped and they're not really 100 percent pre-gapped for your exact outboard so you might need to grab a gap tool and verify that it is properly gapped to your exact serial number outboard and feeding upward don't forget about your wires and boots and common cause number three a faulty or broken or worn out ignition coil well just not doing its job and common cause number four feeding back to your switch box again the least likely or most uncommon part to fail but we definitely can't rule it out as an option and diyers i hope this helps what i'll do now is put the cap back on the boat and retie it to the dock All right, DOR is back at the workstation, and on the other side of the jet ski is the workbench. Let's head there now. Making our way around the jet ski to the workbench, and there are our recently replaced and old ignition coils. I want to take off the actual rubber boot to the broken one and show you the magnetic portion that broke and caused our exact misfire at high RPM. And DIYers, I got the camera position. Here is our old and recently replaced ignition coils. I'm just going to carefully remove this little boot here and check that out this is actually supposed to not be broken right there but look cracked right in half and when the engine is running it is vibrating significantly and at high rpm with that vibration every so often the actual current between these two points and these two connections which is not supposed to be separate connections it is supposed to be one piece all the way down to this main unit surface here well, it vibrated to a point where it created a misfire. And replacing that did the trick. Put this back on. And again, it's unlikely that yours is broken, but if it is, definitely replace it. Or if you've never replaced it since owning the boat, and you've owned the boat for quite a while, I recommend replacing both ignition coils. Taking a big step back, poor side of the jet ski, and DIYers in the event that you are into jet skiing. Definitely check out the link down below. We will have a link on how to assemble an awesome jet ski stand. Not this jet ski going on it, but a 1995 Sea Dew XP. And that'll be fun. A lot of DIY repair videos ahead for all of you, the DIY community. Let's get back to the original video. DIYers, I got the boat repositioned and secured to the dock. And again, we hope this helps. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.